Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Max Ace Kestrel, which is a very interesting knife. It's got a great price tag on it. There's a bunch of different versions of this. Uh, we're gonna talk about it. It's interesting how they've done the different versions, but I will link this right down below in the description so that you guys can take a look for yourselves. Thanks so much to Max Ace for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. Overall length of the Kestrel coming in, I assume that's how you pronounce it, coming in at eight and a quarter. Blade length is actually pretty long. It's it's almost 3.7, I'm gonna call it 3.65 inches. Cutting edge, it's actually more than three and a half. It's, it's like eh, 3.55 is what we'll call it. How about um, some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? So you can see here that this is just a little tiny bit shorter than the Rat 1. How about up against the Demco 8020.5? How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Very similar size to the Spyderco PM2. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Bugout. And how about the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Alrighty. So how's the action on this guy? So this is a front flipper and it runs on bearings. And the, um, you know, like when you're closing it, the action is okay. I, I honestly, I think it's just breaking in, right? I, I've felt some Max Ace knives like this. And honestly, it's kind of like how brand new Wii knives come. It just needs to break in a little bit more. And this one is just going through a longer break in period, right? Access to that frame lock is very good. This has been cut out and it allows it to drop shut. Uh, very easily. Uh, this is a front flipper only, and I've always said if you're going to do that, uh, the front flipper needs to work flawlessly, and it needs to be tuned, the detent needs to be tuned correctly. We have a large horn, I guess, is what we're going to call it, the front flipper, the unicorn horn. Uh, very easy to get a hold of. I mean, you know, take that with a grain of salt, because it's an awkward way to open a knife if you've never done it before. It's definitely going to be weird. No matter how well tuned the front flipper is, it's going to be weird, but it works. As far as front flippers goes, this is a good one. I kind of always wish that there's a secondary means of deployment coupled with a front flipper, but this is front flipper only. So if you really hate that or you're not sure that you're going to like it, you might consider, right? Um, so there you go. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's a little bit thicker, not much. Length and height up against the PM2. And the Para 3, you can see here that uh, this guy is a little bit shorter than the PM2, a little longer than the Para 3. In terms of height, nowhere near the same height as either. It really won't be that much of a problem in the pocket for a lot of people. But, you know, for people who carry really small knives, you're definitely going to notice it. Let's go ahead and weigh it. What are we looking at for materials? This one is primarily carbon fiber with a titanium um, back. It's like a wraparound spine turtle shell it's i mean initially i thought that these this was three pieces of titanium and then there was a backspace here no this is one piece of titanium it wraps around there's another version of this that is titanium right here with a carbon fiber inlay and a carbon fiber wrap around backspacer then they have another version where i assume it's titanium back here it could be steel because it's a lot less and then this part is G10. Then they have another version where there's, it's like zirconium. I don't know. It's funny how they did that. So depending on which version you get, the weight could be wildly different because you have, you'll have more or less of either carbon fiber or titanium, which are obviously have very different weights with the same total amount of space they take up in the universe. Anyways, the weight on this one is about 3.99 ounces. I would venture to guess if you get the version that is mostly titanium with a carbon fiber backspacer. It might weigh a little bit more, right? This is probably one of the lighter variants, but it's, it's interesting. I mean, if you haven't yet, use that link and go look at all the different versions. They're, they're, <laughs> they're interesting, right? So not bad though, not a perfect ounce to inch ratio, but good enough. And honestly, the balance on it, I think is pretty close to the pivot. It's right about where you're gonna put your finger in that standard grip, right? So it really doesn't feel all that heavy. Um, yeah, just fine. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. 
Uh, get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. That's a T15. I'm just checking to see if this is actually a T10 for the pivot. I always forget with Max Ace. It is not. It is a T8. So T8. And then I also wanted to check because I didn't when I pulled this thing out of there. Did this come? This one did not come with a massive amount of additional hardware. So if they intended to send this with, usually Max Ace knives come with this giant bag of additional hardware, and that's probably something they reserve for the more expensive stuff, but maybe not. Maybe they intended to send me a huge bag of additional hardware and they just didn't. All of my other Max Ace knives, right? I mean, truthfully, they've all been the more expensive ones. They've all come with a massive additional bag of hardware, which I think is, you should be doing that with all of your knives, right? I couldn't imagine that that's really all that expensive. Um, but anyways, the hardware that it comes with uh, is minimal. There's just a couple of screws on each each side. There's a hidden screw for the pocket clip. There's another screw holding in the lock on this particular version. On the versions where the frame is titanium, I would imagine that they don't need to do that, but they might just to keep you know, so that they're not having to mill entirely separate frames. I honestly didn't look. So you can look if you want to on the versions that are titanium framed. The titanium piece might be separate or it might actually be attached. On this version, it is attached to uh, the carbon fiber by means of an additional fastener. So there you go. In any case, it should not be easy, uh, difficult to take apart. It's pretty, pretty simple construction otherwise. Um, this piece right here is just going to kind of unsheathe after you remove the screws here. So it should be fine. Um, as long as you have, you know, the right tools or quality tools and a place to put your hardware, you should be good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and do a measurement of blade stock thickness here. This is fairly thick. It looks like maybe 150 thousandths or so, but I'm usually wrong. So, nah, I got it. <laughs> 150 thousandths. Okay. A little bit on the thicker side, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. This is a rare example of Max Ace being calm with a design, right? And this, to some people, might look pretty aggressive. And if, if you think that, then I would say to you, holy crap, you have no idea. You should go look at their website. This is very, very calm. This is a whisper for Max Ace, right? Most of their designs scream in your face through a series of megaphones. Um, but uh, this is pretty calm. And, you know, it's nice. The ergonomics are actually really good. Uh, this has a very, very comfortable lock-in thanks to, number one, a smooth milled titanium clip. It's important to point out here. The milling on this knife is not simple. This is not a simple thing to do. The inlay work is really, really nice. The fact that we have a huge, I mean, we can't really even call this a backspacer. It's just like a spine connection it's it's like a combination frame spacer well you can't call it a spacer because it doesn't space it's just the way that the back of the frame is right but there's a lot of complicated milling here that's nice that they go out of their way to do that right i love the micro spacing for the jimping that's really nice i think they should have continued it up the ramp but that's fine it feels good this lock in here is really really nice ergonomically this is a, a really you know nice knife to hang on to and has good comfortable lock in without the need for excessive you know areas where there's lots of traction or anything like that um, and again, you know, deploying it once you get used to a, a front flipper is fine. Uh, there's a large sharpening toil area. The blade is cool, and these come in a, a couple of different blade shapes. It's large spearhead and small spearhead. Both of them are recurves. This one is a recurve with a totally different, um, like, it's just like an abrupt change here, kind of like a subtle recurve tanto, elongated recurve tanto spear point. You can see why I hate trying to classify blades correctly. I'm sure somebody down there will tell me exactly what it is, and that's fine. I can't be bothered with it because the thing has such a long and complicated specific title, and people will argue about what it actually is. I can't be bothered with it. Here's the shape of the blade, right? It's got a recurve and then an immediate change uh, in angle uh, as it, it turns into this sort of you know, regular spear point or drop point blade. This one, um, both of them have an area where it's it's plenty of belly, but I, I just don't like recurves. Um, number one, 
even if they're, it's a, more of a soft curvature, it's still awkward to sharpen. This will be even more awkward to sharpen. You could make an argument that, in, that a blade like this uh, allows for material to be drawn aggressively into the belly, making some cuts in specific scenarios a little bit easier. I doubt you'll notice. I think the people who are going to be super interested in the blade are going to be less interested in it for spe very specific utilitarian advantages and more interested in it because it look cool. Knife look cool. Blade look cool, right? But we can't stop there, right? Because we're refined knife enthusiasts. We have to develop imaginary roles for these things, right? So for whatever reason that you like it, you can continue to like it. For me, it's... for This is what I honestly think. I think it's going to cause more problems than... Um, it's, it's going to solve. Uh, but if you think that it's cool, then you, it's not really that big of a deal to work around. It's just not going to look super great after you sharpen it a few times. Um, they do have, uh, an interesting kind of two tone thing going on here. We have like a light, almost looks like a glass blasting on the, uh, the bevel that drops down to the final, uh, cutting bevel. And we have what looks like a hand rub satin finish is probably done by machine right here for the flat. And then it goes back to that blasted look up here on the swedge. And it looks really nice. It, it really does. This is a cool blade shape and it's certainly not a blade shape you see very often. And for a lot of people, uh, that's really all it'll take is just looking, you know, it's just not another simple drop point, which there's merit to that. We, we definitely have enough drop points and spear points. So it's nice to see something a little bit different, even if that different will create more utilitarian issues uh, for people. So, okay. It says Max Ace on this side, and on the other side it says Kestrel. I've always maintained you don't need to put the name of the knife on the blade. You can just, it can be called the Kestrel. You can put it on the box, right? You don't need to take space up on the blade. Um, as far as I know, and I believe that it actually says this on the box, um, these are in, yeah, Bowler M390. And it doesn't actually say on the blade anywhere unless I'm missing it. Oh, no, it does. It's just way tucked under the... Um, the flip, you can see it right there. So, yeah, it's M390. I think Max Ace is hitting M390 at the same area that everybody else is, which is 59 to 61. Wish it was a little bit higher, but okay, right? Uh, these are definitely mass-produced knives, so you're getting an okay M390 heat treat. But you're getting a pretty good heat treat on M390 if you're ending up with one of those that is hitting uh, 61. So... There you go. I don't know that the recurve and the fairly thick blade geometry is, you know, M390 properly accentuated, but all right, you know, uh, that's kind of, that's just the blade steel that people like to see. I, I really think Max Ace would um, be smart to make the transition that a lot of companies are making, and that is to move to S90V. Um, as I've stated in some other Micron videos, I originally criticized uh, a 59 to 61 heat treatment on S90V, but it turns out that actually is pretty optimal when we're considering a knife, uh, a pocket knife being made of S90V. Because remember, S90V's primary application is not in folding knives. It's in industrial food prep or something like that. So it's actually heat treated lower there. But for pocket knives, 5961 is actually good for S90V. And S90V has better edge retention than M390. And it's at least the same toughness, if not a little bit better, with slightly less corrosion resistance. And it's generally considered to be a more premium steel, right? A lot of companies are moving to it. M390 is a little bit it's become a little boring, right? And not a lot of companies are hitting the right numbers anyway. So, might be a good move, right? But that will come down to personal opinion and preference and stuff like that. Just my two cents there. Um, the coolest part of this knife is 100% the frame, right? This is the shred carbon fiber. And yeah, we can see little voids in there. But that's the name of the game. That's the nature of the beast when we're talking about shred carbon fiber. It just kind of is that way. Personally, I think, um, you know, either way, whether you go with the versions that are titanium frames with the carbon fiber wraparound back sheath thing, uh, either way, right? Uh, it, it's really cool. It, it, it's really neat how they've laid this titanium in and machined this to all fit together. They've even kind of partially split the area that the screws go in. Um, I, I just really think that's awesome. I mean, you can see how it's connected there. It kind of lips underneath. It's not like it's just barely hanging on by a thread. There's a ton of of uh, material, like the part of the carbon fiber that sort of lips in underneath the titanium. This is not a simple thing. Like this is really, you know, I, we're really coming out of the days where just the fact that the frame is titanium is impressive. That's just not impressive anymore. It's it's really fun to see companies like Max Ace 
uh, doing complicated things with the materials. And you know, lots of people will argue, what's the point of it if it doesn't add to utility? I'll argue, why are you sitting here watching this video? You should know good and well what corner of the knife world you are in. You're watching a video of a $200 pocket knife, right? If you have to ask those questions, you already know the answer. Don't give me that. Don't you come in here with your nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but it is cool, right? It's true. We're no longer impressed by the fact that titanium, carbon fiber, or M390 are the ingredients to the cake mix. We want to know what you did with them. We want to know what the cake looks like afterwards, right? We're, uh, we, we, we're bored of just the simple stuff. So that's cool that there are companies like Maxase out there doing stuff like this. It's really, really neat. And as per usual, their fit and finish and execution is exquisite. It's really, really good. Nothing is out of place. Nothing looks sloppy. No sharp edges. Even small details like having the exact same, like how they do, they've done the back of the pocket clip here to uh, the, the angle is exactly the same. There's a small shelf, small flat area, and it transitions right into the next chamfer, which is at the same angle as pocket clip and it looks really really cool nothing looks out of place even the backspacer um slash because it technically does have a separate backspacer which is finished slightly different uh it's a place for a, a lanyard uh if you want to put that there and and honestly as much as i always complain about these things it, it kind of looks nice on this knife it's like they're just adding a little cherry on top and showing off that they can not only add it but make it look good with everything else uh, there's no lefty position for the pocket clip. Sorry, lefties. Wish there was, but there isn't. Uh, but the pocket clip they have on it is really nice. It probably could have been a little bit shorter, but it's not. So, okay. It is a milled titanium clip, and that's really cool. This is, in fact, titanium. Uh, the magnet does not stick to it. And I know there's plenty of materials out there that are non-magnetic and metallic, right? But in this case, this is titanium. There is no chance that it is aluminum. That's just not what's going on here. Uh, the only one that I'm a little bit... The only version of this knife that I'm a little bit cautious about saying that with is the G10 version because the price is substantially lower. So it's possible that they have a steel lock and steel spine piece on that one. Uh, but these versions where it's either, you know, where it's carbon fiber, uh, the, the, all, the other material on there, the other metallic material is titanium for sure. Um, but uh, anyways... A uh, little bit of texturing and additional milling on this. They could have just left this plain, right? This looks like it's a separate piece, but it isn't. These are just two little lines that are milled into it. You can see they just end right there. This is all one piece, and it, it absolutely is wrapping in there enough to create the integrity that would be required to hold everything together. Um, this, <laughs> for some reason, does not have a, you know, and the, actually, the lock itself is steel. That's why. So this piece is titanium, this is steel, right? And a lot of people are going to be like, I wanted that piece to be titanium and then for, the, for them to put a piece of steel in the lock bar. But why? You know, I mean, they're, they're clearly not skipping out on materials here. It's just that the thing that's locking it, instead of it being titanium and having a steel lock bar insert, the entire thing is steel. So the same result here. The only difference is, is that if something goes wrong with the lock bar, you would be replacing the entire lock bar versus just a chip, right? But I, I really don't think that's gonna happen unless you're abusing the knife, right? In which case that's your fault. Um, we uh, have a stop pin located in its traditional position with plenty of shouldering. No blade play up, down, left, or right. Easy to disengage with no stick. No pivot lash. It's smooth but breaking in. I mean, it's not the smoothest thing in the whole world. There's some areas that I feel like maybe the bearings need to kind of grind out a little bit. Taking it apart and cleaning it. Uh, and adding a single drop of 10 weight nano oil to the detent ball will absolutely help that. I have no doubt that this will break in just fine, but it, it is a little bit tight out of the box. And then we have, that looks like perfect centering to me. Yep, it sure is. And no detent lash. You can even open this with the side of your index finger, which is usually a sign of a really well-tuned front flipper. And why do we use that? Why do I use that as a <laughs> way to measure that? I don't know, because you, you shouldn't be opening your knife that way. But usually if it will deploy that way, it will deploy reliably with a more organic thumb deployment, right? This knife has a uh, pretty impressive price tag. Consider, I mean, it is made in China, but it's made by Maxace, who is 
probably one of, if not like, I mean, they are really, really challenging Riot for their level of complex machining. Um, they're certainly challenging them when it comes to their prices. You're getting a lot of carbon fiber and titanium uh, with M390, but more importantly, it is executed in a way that is much more complicated than other pocket knives at this same price point. Uh, this guy's coming in at $198 or $150 for the G10 version. It is very possible that the G10 version does also have a titanium back spacer sheath thing, right? But wow, really impressive. Honestly, I have no issue with that price tag. The only issue that people are going to run into is just the awkwardness of resharpening and using a recurve blade. I also don't personally really like how they look, but that's, you know, again, that's like a personal thing. I think they would have done better to just do a straight edge on this. I think that people would have enjoyed it a lot more. I also really feel like they should have included a thumb stud on this guy, but, you know, it is what it is. Generally speaking, um, this is recommendable, like, for people that like recurves, you know. this It's not going to be for everybody, especially considering the blade shape is a little weird and the you can only deploy it with a front flipper, right? But for people who are okay with that stuff, this is extremely recommendable. The price tag is really amazing, especially on the G10 version. Man, Maxis should absolutely be pushing for, um, you know, they don't have to do them all, but they should definitely... Uh, see what people think about S90V on some of their models and the fact that they can do uh, models with zirconium accents and keep the price down is also really impressive. So uh, Max Ace, you should absolutely be pushing for more of that stuff. The people who are interested in buying your knives really like those extra details and those more exotic materials versus the traditional stuff that we see. Um, but yeah, uh, Max Ace is doing what they do best here, which is to take materials that people like in the knife world and not just slapping them together in a common sandwich or pillar construction. They're doing weird stuff. Um, and that's cool. That's what enthusiasts like me like to see. And, that, you know, the cherry on top is that this is a functional tool. Uh, it will work. It will last, right, if you take care of it. So, yeah, I don't have a problem with the price tag. Uh, it's But, it you know, it's, it's not like I can recommend this to everybody. It, it's really cool. And the people who do pick it up, you're going to be impressed with it. Um, yours might need to break in a little bit, kind of like this one, but eventually it, it will. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't have any other complaints there. That's really all I have to say. So Max Ace Kestrel, very cool. Makes me excited to see what they will do in the future. I feel like we are just at the tip of the iceberg. I just feel like we're about to see the craziest things we've ever seen from so many companies. And Max Ace is going to be right up there delivering some absolute haymakers. Um, that just sounds like they're going to be punching us all in the face. <laughs> In a way that we like, right? We're, we're going to be like, please punch us. We enjoy these direct face punches. Um, I'll link this knife down below. You guys can check it out if you want to. Thanks again to Max Ace for sending us in. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.